Expedia does not save you money all the time. Hi guys, I am back with a, another Vlogmas day three. I don't know. <laughs> this has been so crazy, you guys. I'm trying to get better with my camera skills because I do this really terrible thing where I stare off to the sides, which I'm sure you guys have seen a lot. But I promise I'm going to get better because I want it to look like I am talking to you. That's my goal. <laughs> All right, so I felt a little triggered today. I wanted to talk about hotels. For those of you that don't know, I have been working in the hotel industry for about 13 years. I have worked for Hilton, Best Western, Wyndham, Radisson, IHG, Choice Hotels, Independent Hotels. Gosh, I feel like I'm missing something. I've worked for a lot of hotels, okay? Casino hotels, like you name it, I've pretty much worked for it. And there's so many misconceptions in this industry and I've started breaking that down on my TikTok, but I felt triggered on one particular topic here and I go over it a lot on TikTok. It is the, you know, the idea that sites like Expedia are going to give you cheaper rates than the hotels directly. Nine out of 10 times, this is not the case. Generally speaking, of course, there's also caveats but overall, I'm gonna tell you why. And this particularly um, pertains to branded hotels. So branded hotels like Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton, IHG, they have franchises with all of these hotels. Most hotels are not corporately owned by these companies. They're franchised by individuals or management companies. So that's step one. So in the franchise agreement, there is a little clause that says you cannot publish rates on other websites cheaper than the brand site. So if you are a Hampton Inn and Suites, you are not allowed to have cheaper rates on Expedia than Hilton.com. So what happens if you publish rates that are cheaper than Hilton.com, you'll get a warning first and then you'll start getting fined per reservation and the fines usually start at about $5,000 a piece because these brands have worked really hard to put out advertising and marketing, especially to their loyalty members, that you are gonna find the best price guarantee on their website. So I'm gonna show you an example of this right now. Okay, so today we're gonna look at the Hilton Fort Lauderdale Beach Resort. I have it pulled up here on Expedia. There's a few things I want you to look at. Obviously, we're gonna look at the rate, but I also want you to look at the name of the room. So we scroll down here. Their best rate is 212. And like I said, pay attention to these room type names because this is one thing that happens with third parties as well. See, room names. Okay, let's head over to Hilton. The membership rate is cheaper at $199. I'm gonna back step here and notice that the room types aren't always called the same. So if you verify a room type on a third party, you need to call the hotel and verify that it's that same room type. You cannot take the third party's information for granted. The other example is going to be the name your own price, which is now the price breaker tool, where you don't get to actually officially pick the hotel. It's kind of like a gamble or you bid on it. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're gonna look at packaging. So I packaged together a flight through Expedia. This is the total price for two people with the airfare. And what you're gonna find is this works out to be about $50 cheaper than if you were to book it separately together. These are using opaque rays. This is that packaging. It's all behind the scenes and you're not able to see it. So you pick your flight choices. It's a little different than what I had, but these options still flagged for the same price anyways. But keep in mind also, when you're booking airfare, make sure it is not a basic economy fare. Or, I mean, it can be if you're okay with flying basic economy. But if you want to have more bags included, make sure you upgrade on the next page here. You'll see that option down here. So the total comes to be about 913. All right, let's head over to Hilton. So the cost for the room would have been 538. And then the airfare was, I think, $225 a piece. We'll see here on the next page. 
So the grand total is 988 if you booked it separately, but keep in mind the 988 here was regular economy and I believe on the upgraded page is about $47, so it's kind of a wash. All right, the name your own price tool, which is now called the price breaker. So what they'll do is they'll show you a couple hotels, you know, which hotel will you get that is completely up to them. You can show them your preference, but it is up to them at the end of the day. This is an opaque rate as well. See here on the brand website, it does save you a little bit of money, but keep in mind, you cannot get IHG points with this reservation or any brand points. So I'm not on a witch hunt, but at the same time I kind of am. They're a little bit of a, what we call a necessary evil in the industry. They do help get some rooms, but most hotels strive to not have third party bookings be their main source of revenue. Because what happens is, is you pay Expedia, you know, say $212. The hotel does not get $212. Expedia usually takes about 18 to 27% depending on the negotiated rate off of that rate and then the hotel takes the remainder so the hotels can never give you an actual receipt of what you paid because you have to go through Expedia because you paid them something different than the hotel made and the other caveat to that is that if you check into a hotel and have a terrible experience I never want you to check in and have a terrible experience but you know it happens you sometimes if the hotel is going to be difficult you have to go fight Expedia to get your money back and it is just a headache there are situations where you know Expedia works for some people I'm going to kind of list them right here you know if you are somebody that does not you know travel frequently you don't have brand loyalty you know it might make better sense for you to go through somebody like Expedia and just have a generic rewards program um, that's a case where it works. You know, if you're doing a big family trip and you're packaging, that's something where it might work as well. These are some of the reasons why you should consider booking direct. So generally speaking, you're going to get that lowest price. Secondly, membership pays off. It's worthwhile to have two, you know, good membership programs. Like I personally myself have Hilton and Marriott. I tend to lean more towards Hilton because I have a lot of points from working with Hilton prior. Um, but you know, loyalty pays off. There's extra promotions that are run with reward members. You get more upgrades, you get more perks, you know, loyalty pays off. And the nice thing with that is you do get brand consistency. If that's something that's important to you, if you want to be able to go from destination to destination to kind of know that, you know, the same things are waiting for you that you are used to and comfortable with, that is a great reason to use that. So if you prefer independent boutique hotels, there are actually reward programs that are not through third parties like iRewards, um, Stash, and they are a group of independent and boutique hotels. So if you don't want cookie cutter, there's an option for you to still be brand loyal without having to use third parties. And I'll put that right over there. And I'll also send some links down here below. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this and continue following me through this vlogmas. Please leave any comments down there and thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.